What is the most basic and simple way to save game data between sessions? Well, if we are talking about Unity, the answer would most likely be player prefs. So today I'm gonna show you a quick and easy to understand example of using player prefs. Moreover, we will write the basic script responsible for saving and loading game data completely from scratch. And I'll do my best to keep this lesson short and straightforward. But before we dive into coding, let's first discuss the limitations of player prefs. As the definition implies, they were created as a way to literally save player preferences. So they're not safe for storing secret or sensitive information, such as personal data or passwords. Second, you should avoid using player prefs if you want to prevent players from cheating, because they are extremely easy to access and modify. Also, transferring player prefs from one device to another can be difficult or sometimes even impossible. Finally, if you are trying to build a more sophisticated save system with multiple save slots or want to use cloud-based saving, then player prefs are probably not the way to go. Other than that, player prefs are completely acceptable, especially for aspiring game developers putting together their first game. Now let's take a look at the actual example. I've created this simple scene consisting of one text field displaying a number and two buttons. Currently they do nothing. And as I promised, we'll create a script for this scene from scratch. Click on create and then select C Sharp script. We'll name it Player Prefs Demo. Now let's open it. Inside the script, we remove unnecessary using statements, but add using TextMesh Pro instead, as we need it to access the text field variable in the script. We also clean up unnecessary code within our class. Next, we create a text field variable called ValueTF, which stands for Value Text Field. I'm using the serialized field attribute here to make this private field accessible in the Unity editor. The only other variable we need is an integer called value, which will be used to increment or decrement our number. In the start method, we set value to zero and assign it to the text property of our text field. Now we need to create two more methods that will serve as event handlers for our plus and minus buttons. Let's call them accordingly, plus and minus. In the plus method, we increment the value and assign it to the text field. We do the same in the minus method, but instead of incrementing the value, we decrement it. And voila, we are ready to test. Let's return to the Unity editor and add our player prep demo script to the stats panel game object. Next. Let's set value TF by dragging and dropping the corresponding text field. Finally, we need to set event handlers for both buttons. We set the minus method as an event handler for the minus button and we set the plus method as an event handler for the plus button. Now press the play button to test it out. As you can see, we can change our number by clicking the corresponding buttons. However, once we stop the game, and restart it, our number resets to zero. So how can we save our data? With player prefs, we can save data of three types, integer, float and string by simply using methods player prefs set int, player prefs set float and player prefs set string, followed by the key and the value we want to save. To retrieve this data, we use methods like player prefs get int, player prefs get float, and player prefs get string, followed by the key. We can also specify the default value, which will be used in case the key wasn't found. So let's modify our script to utilize player prefs. First, we need to save our number each time we increase or decrease it. After incrementing the number, we use player prefs set int with the key named value and the actual value we want to save. We do the same for the minus method. The last thing we need to do is assign our saved data to the value variable in the start method. So instead of initializing value to zero, 
we are using the value retrieved from player prefs get int method, passing the k value. We also set a default value in case the k is not found. Now let's take a look at the result. I'll increase the value to 6 and after restarting the game you can see that this number persists. If I decrease it to let's say minus 10 and then restart the game, you can see that the value is still there. This persistence remains even if I close Unity Editor completely or even restart the computer. That's how player prefs work and you can use them to save virtually any in-game data you need. Even if you need to save different types of data, they can all be converted to one of three supported types. Also, if you find this guide helpful, please don't hesitate to give it a like and subscribe to this channel, as I plan to publish even more videos like this. For now though, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.